So just jumping in, the what? Well, what we're going to cover today is two tools in particular. And these are tools that take five minutes or less. And they're called trends at a glance or tag analysis. And then Pareto tables. And this is uh, similar to Pareto charts, but when you have so much data that charts become unwieldy and you might wanna use a table. And this again takes five minutes or less. Now, the question is, why would we want to use these? Well, there's a really good reason for using these tools. And it's basically this. When we are focused on continuous improvement, oftentimes we have so much data to choose from, so many opportunities, and it's hard to say no, or hard to know what we should say no to and what we should say yes to. These tools will be an opportunity for you to look through your data and give you some information that you can use to make those decisions. It's not a question of, you know, what bad ideas do we say no to, but it's really the question of what great ideas do we say no to so that we can be laser focused on those things that can have the most impact. And that's why I believe you wanna use these tools. So let's jump into the how. Now, before we jump into the details of the how, let's talk a little bit of background. So I, for Trends at a Glance, I was working at, for a company, uh, consulting with them, and I was itemizing problems they had and making run charts, and similar to this one you see here. And the run chart would itemize the problems by month that you would see. And then a trend line of how things were going. Are they getting better or worse? And then as we expanded this research, we would do it by more groups. And eventually I had 120 groups and I was making 120 run charts like this. And I just got to thinking, this is really unwieldy. There's gotta be a better way to display this data, to evaluate this data. And even if I could automate the run charts, sorting through them and presenting them to decision makers, it became unwieldy. And then something hit me. And it took me back to my teenage years to thinking about my old friend, the equation of a line. So we'll use aspects of the equation of a line for trends at a glance. Now, if you don't remember the equation of a line, no worries. We're only going to use a little bit of an equation of a line and mostly this concept of the slope. And the slope is just the measure of how much something is trending. How, you know, is it is it trending rapidly upward or rapidly downward or is it about even? And so let's look at some examples of the equation of a line and how that idea or that concept of a slope affects the lines. So here's that same run chart we just looked at, and there's the trend line for the run chart. Well, here's the equation for that line. Y equals 18X plus 80. So that slope is 18. And what that's basically saying is that even though this data is variable month over month, each month on average, there's 18 more problems each month. That's the slope. So 18 more problems, if we, all things being equal, if this slope continued, if this trend continued, 10 months from now, we'd have 180 more problems, a rapidly growing issue, right? So let's look at some more examples of lines and their slopes. So for example, this is the one we just looked at with the slope of 18. Here's a line that's flat and its slope is zero. And this line is trending downward over time. Its slope is a negative number, negative 18 in this case, which is saying that each month there's 18 fewer problems. Now with this as a background, let's jump in to the how. All right. Now, the best way to talk about the how of trends at a glance is to look at a demo. So let's do that. Now, I'm going to use Excel to build this. And so I'm pulling up some data. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind that you can use any tool. I'm just using Excel for this example. You could use uh, Google Sheets or Power BI, whatever tool that would meet the same guidelines of meeting the spirit of what we're trying to do. 
but I'm going to explain this data. And basically my data here is calls coming into a service desk and somebody has a problem and then a service desk agent writes some data about that problem. Now your data might be completely different. It might be health related data, morbidity rates, or it could be stock price data or accounting data of some type. This, for this example, I'm just gonna use calls coming into a service desk. And this is from a real data set with a company I consulted with, but it's uh, all changed. I changed all the names to numbers for data security, obviously reasons. So basically each row here represents a call that comes in to an agent and that agent categorizes the problem. And they categorize it into a major grouping, which has about 10 major groupings and then a subgrouping, which there's about a hundred of those and then a configuration item, which there's several hundred of those. So each individual problem in my data set here is represented fully by those three items combined. So here's what I've decided to do to help me slice and dice this data to build a trend at a glance table. I went to the end of the data and I added a couple of fields. This first field I added was a concatenation of those three fields. So I can fully itemize the different problem types by adding those three fields together or concatenating them together. I also needed time data. Now the time data I have is by the month, but your data could be completely different. It could be by quarter, by year, by second. We just need time data so we can see how things are trending over time. My data happens to start with January as month one, but it could be any time. Month one or time period one could be July or August, whatever your data turns out to be. Mine happens to be January. So the first thing I want to do, step one, is to create a pivot table out of this data so I can slice and dice it. Now, if you're not familiar with pivot tables, it's a little bit outside of the scope of this webinar to teach pivot tables, but you can just Google uh, pivot tables, how to create one. They're pretty intuitive. And you might even just pick it up from the example here when I build this one. But I want to slice and dice my data. So I'm going to create a pivot table. And this is how I would do it. I would go to insert pivot table. And you see Excel gives me this wizard. And I almost always just accept the default that it gives me. Basically, it says, what data do I want to use? And it automatically assumes I want to use all the data in my current table, which I do. <clears throat> And then it says, where do you want to put this table? In a new worksheet? It, and of course, that's what I want. So I just accept the defaults. I say, OK. And it builds this blank table for me. And it has all my header rows over here on the right side. Well, what I first want to do is itemize, well, what are those various types of problems that I have? And that's in that connect, concatenated field. So I'm going to drag that down to the rows. And look, by magic, there's all my various types of problems listed. Now I would like to know, well, how many problems of each type are there? So I'm gonna drag that same field over to the values and it's going to count them up for me. And look, it tells me in an instant how many of each problem type there all were. Now in my data set, I didn't mention it earlier, but there's about 73,000 rows of data, 73,000 calls that came in over a 13 month period. And so this is slicing and dicing the count of those. Now, what I really want though, is this data trending over time. So I'm going to add the time element. I'm gonna to go to my month field and drag it into columns. And then boom, in an instant, I see how things are trending for every individual problem type in my data set. Now, there's one last thing I'd like to do. These fields that there were no problems in a given month for that given problem type, they're blank. So I'm just going to right click on my pivot table and go to pivot table options. And then for empty cells, show zero instead of blank. So I click OK, and now I have zeros there. And so you see always a number in every field, even if it's zero. So the next thing I would do, step two of creating a, a tag table, is I would copy and paste this data into another tab, another worksheet, so that I could format it uh, better. And 
I are, have already done that just for this demo into this format. Now you see I've got my problem types in column A. I've got my months here in row two and the total in column O. And this is the number of each problem of this problem type. So this is compelling data. And if I wanted, I could take each one of these rows of data and create a run chart. But that would be really unwieldy. In fact, I have over 900 rows. Let me just click on this to see. I've got 939 rows in this, but with the header, there's 938 rows of actual data. That would be a lot of run charts. So something that would be more compelling or easier to grasp is simply by going back to the concept we talked about earlier, adding the slope to each row. So let's do that. Let's add the value of the slope of that trend line to each row. Well, now how do we do that? Well, Excel has a great little equation for us already built into the tool. It's called slope. Super easy. And then if I put my parens there, it tells me exactly the data elements I need to include, the known Ys and the known Xs. So for my known Ys, it's just the data in that row. So I'm going to highlight that. And there's my known Ys. And I'll put a comma. And now for my known Xs, that's just the months or the time periods. So I'll highlight those. So there is my equation for the slope of the trend line for that data. Now I'm gonna do one other thing because I want to drag that equation down through all the rows. So for each row, I want it to increment. Like this first one is in row three is my known Ys, but then I want row four, I want it to use the known Ys for row four, then row five, et cetera. But as I drag it down, I want the known X's to always look at row two because I want it to always be those months. So what I'm gonna do is hit F4 in Excel and see what happens when I hit F4. I'm gonna hit it now. And you see it put the dollar signs in there. And that's basically telling Excel, hey, keep those static. Don't increment your known X's when you drag the equation down. But since there's no dollar signs in the known Ys, go ahead and increment those. So I'm going to close, do a close paren to finish up the function, hit enter. And there is the slope of that first row. Now I'm going to use that little square there and double click it. And it magically passes that equation down all the way through all 900 rows of data, as you can see. And if I look into one of those and look up at the equation, you can see it, it did increment the known Ys, but it kept the known Xs constant. So there I have my slope. Now this is pretty compelling here. It gives me the slope of each one of these, but it's still a little bit unwieldy. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my data just so I can select it all. And I'll go all the way back up to the top and then select all my data. And then I'm going to sort by slope from largest to smallest. I'm gonna click okay. And then when I do that in an instant, I can see which items, which types of problems are trending the worst. As you can see, this one is trending really bad. The second one, both of these top two are trending really bad. And really these first eight are sort of a, have an upward trend, but then I get down to things that aren't trending quite so poorly. So I can begin to ask questions about this. This really lends insight into what things I might want to focus on. And also I could go down the other direction and look at the bottom and say, well, what's causing these to trend so well? And I can utilize <clears throat> those techniques to help me fix the things that are trending poorly. So that is trends at a glance. Now we took maybe seven or eight minutes to go over that, but that's because I was talking. 
really in reality, it would just take three to five minutes to build this. And you'd have all this insight that you could glean from something just that quick. Now let's go back to our PowerPoint and talk about our next tool, Pareto tables. Now, if you're familiar with Pareto charts, it's a great tool. If you have a few items that are primary drivers for something, then it's really a visual, great way to see what your big drivers are. Like in this example, there are 10 things that are affecting our outcomes. And the top two are obviously the ones that we would wanna focus on if we wanted to fix 80% of the problems. That this red line is the percent of total impact. Now, let's say though, that we had more than 10 groups. Let's say we had a hundred groupings. Well, that's too much of a good thing, right? So all of a sudden our Pareto chart becomes a little bit unwieldy. You can still see some things, but the, the uh, x-axis doesn't allow us to see all the groupings. It only shows every third one. What if you had 900 or something like in our data set? Well, then it becomes really unwieldy and it only shows every 20th item. So let's think about this. How can we fix that? How can we view this data in a Pareto fashion in a better way? Well, let's look at a demo. So I'm going to go back to our Excel sheet. Now, I've got this sorted by slope right now, but for my Pareto analysis, to build a Pareto table, I'm going to sort rather by total. So let me select all the data again, perform the sort, select the element I want to sort on, change it to total from largest to smallest. So I'll scroll back up to the top. And then you see here, here's my items, largest to smallest. So these are the types of problems that have the greatest impact down to the least impact in the 900 and some odd row. Now for Pareto analysis, a Pareto table, I would add some columns here. I've already done that. Uh, in this example, just for uh, the sake of the demo. And I've added the columns I would add. And those columns would be percent and then cumulative percent. And then I've got the sum total here. Now this is the total number of problems. So for this data set, there were 76,298 calls that came into a service desk for the 13 months of data. So I want to know what was the percent of impact of the, each of these problem types. So for percent, I'll just type in the equation and it's gonna equal the total for that particular problem type divided by the total number of problems. Now, when I drag this equation down, I, <clears throat> I want the total, uh, the denominator to remain static, to remain the same. So I'm gonna hit F4 again and it's going to put the dollar signs in front. So it will remain static, but I want the numerator to increment. So I'll hit enter and there's the percent of that problem. So you can see this one problem type represents 33% of the calls coming in to this service desk. Now that is compelling data. Well, let's drag that equation down just by double clicking the little square. And there we have the percent impact of every item. Now let's do the cumulative percent for everything as we add the rows. That's why I put zero in this header because it's gonna help me with the equation. All I'm gonna do is add the percent above to the percent of that item or the percent to the left. When I hit enter, of course, it's gonna give me 33% because that, the one above is zero. But as I drag this, as I double click the little square, it's going to add all the rows of data. So in my Pareto analysis, when I want to look for what is the 80% impact, instead of me saying, oh, well, which of these 900 things am I going to focus on? I can look at these top 15 items and see there's 15 problem types that represent 80% of my impact. This is great, compelling data. 
I can say, instead of dealing with 900 issues and which one should I sort through or which one should I select, I can focus on 15. So this is a great first PDCA cycle. PDCA, you know, for lean practitioners, plan, do, check, act. So you can spend five minutes and you can get a good glimpse of what are my primary drivers. So with that data, then you might jump into those 15 items and spend a couple of hours on each one of those and digging into the data and saying, okay, which one of these is for real? Which one of these can I really focus on? And then after you do a second PDCA, spending an hour or two with each of those 15, then you can say, okay, now I know. And here's the five items I'm going to kick off a 500 hour uh, improvement project on. So that is Pareto analysis, a Pareto table. So you can combine Pareto table with trends at a glance and you've got this great examination of the data. You can see the slope is high or low in this case, even though this one had a significant impact, the slope is trending downward. And you can see like this one's trending way downward. And so there's some questions about what causes that. And that's the data you would dig in into your next PDCA cycle. Well, let's jump back into our PowerPoint and talk about just a little bit more on the why, just to summarize. You know, we all have limited time, money, and resources to focus on our improvement efforts. And this, these two tools, Tag Analysis and Pareto Tables, they can give you great insight into rapidly discovering what your primary drivers are. So then, once you have that data in hand, you can open up your lean toolbox and dig out all the tools. You know, maybe you'll do a Dilo or focus on Tim Wood UT or your 5S principles, kick off a Kaizen event. Any of those many lean tools you have in your lean tool bat belt. But you can use your resources wisely, your time, your money, your people, guiding them to focus on what matters most. You can say no to great ideas so that you can be laser focused on those ideas that will have primary impact for your organization. So I hope you can use these tools and they'll really help you out and uh, that you'll apply them to your specific data, whether it be medical data or accounting data or stock price data or problems coming into a call center like uh, I represented in the demo. Well, with that, I wanted to give you a few links uh, to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, first off, <clears throat> uh, Lean Frontiers will make these the slide available and the Excel file available for you after the uh, uh, session here. And uh, if you wanted to read written articles, I've published articles on both tag analysis and Pareto tables, and the links to those are on this slide. You can just click into them. Also, <clears throat> some helpful links if you want more information on slope of the line. Uh, you could just Google it, but also I've uh, given you the link there to the math open reference uh, about the slope of a line. And then, of course, I, the same uh, advice I mentioned earlier about pivot tables. You can just Google it. There's a lot of great videos on how to create pivot tables. Hey, if you want to contact me, I've got several ways to reach out to me. I do motivational speaking, and so you can reach out to me through my motivational speaking website. I'm happy to speak at conferences, uh, I'm particularly interested in youth ministry, and uh, I'm also a professional magician, so I combine that with youth ministry, and that's really a fun time when I speak it to youth. Uh, I'm also an artist. I created the new art form, Ignatian Rogue Art, and so you can reach out to me through that uh, website. That's my online gallery, so you can experience some of the artwork there. And it, Ignatian Rogue Art combines contemporary art with uh, an Ignatian style reflection. And if you want to reach out to me through my magic website, I perform under the stage name Zane Black. Or AmazingZane.com is the website. You can see some magic there. So feel free to uh, look into that. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, there's my LinkedIn uh, address. Feel free. Just mention that you saw me on uh, the Lean Frontiers, and I'll, I'll uh, know that you, where I met you. And I'd be happy to address any questions through any of these contact methods. Each of my websites has a contact uh, me form that you can fill out, or you can just contact me through LinkedIn.
So I really appreciate your time. Now we have just four minutes left. Uh, are there any questions? And I'm not sure if I can hear you, but you could type them in on the chat. I think I'll go ahead and stop sharing my video. Let's see, we have any things coming in on the chat. I'll give it a second. <clears throat> and if there's no questions, I, I want you to feel free to reach out to me and contact me with more questions uh, later on through any of my contact methods that I, I referenced earlier. Give it one more minute and then I might close. Since I'm a professional magician, I'll close with a 10 second magic trick for those who uh, want to stay. All right. Well, I don't see any, I don't see any more questions. So I will demonstrate a short magic trick, 10 second magic trick. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm about to show you a handful of cards. I would like you to just think of any one card. Okay. Are you ready? Here I go. Got one. Okay. So now I'm going to mix up the cards. And as I mix them up, I want you to think of any or, or of that card that you're thinking of right now. Just repeat it in your mind over and over again. Now I'm going to remove one of these cards. Now, interestingly enough, even though I'm here and you're there, we're separated by so much space across the internet, I can tell what you're thinking. And in fact, the card you're thinking of is the one I just removed. <laughs> hey, thanks everybody for your time. I really appreciate it. Genuinely, if you have any questions, give me a shout. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon.